Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV. Back at you, another video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and subscribe, man. Look, so the Ravens had their pre draft press conference today. And who was up there? You got your Eric, you got Eric DaCosta, you got John Harbaugh, you got Joe Ortiz, the director, uh, the lead of the scouting department for the Baltimore Ravens. All right, that's who was up there today. And basically, you know, you had the topic of discussion was uh, Lamar Jackson, draft night. Uh, certain positions like wide receiver, O-line, um, cornerback, you know, those kind of positions. So, but you got to start with at the top was Lamar Jackson, okay? Um, they were asked about Lamar Jackson several times. Um, even one reporter asked about Lamar Jackson making a trade request. EDC shut the question down and pretty much said that I'm not going to discuss anything Lamar Jackson contract related trade request. He's just not going to go into it, all right? He's going to keep this pre-draft press conference about the draft, all right? Um, which is understandable to a certain extent. Uh, uh, also, there was about three Lamar Jackson questions back to back to back. The PR person, so not Eric DeCosta, the actual PR person for the Ravens stepped in and said, hey guys, no more questions about Lamar Jackson and the contract. This is all about um, what's going on with the pre-draft process. No more questions about Lamar Jackson's contract, trade request, shut it down. At one point, they even cut the YouTube audio so we couldn't hear the PR person's full statement. But we know that you can hear him yelling in the background, hey, 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 no more questions. So they shut down the Lamar Jackson talk pretty, pretty fast, all right? Um, and listen, I will say this, right? It is a pre-draft uh, press conference, so it makes sense for it to you shut down the questions like that. Um, also, you don't want to say the wrong thing in common, and now you alienate Lamar Jackson even more, whatever. Uh, but the main thing is the main thing is this. People are right to ask the questions about Lamar Jackson. He's your quarterback, he's the face of your franchise, and he is unsigned as it currently stands as far as a new contract. So that's a fair to ask that. I also think the Ravens are fair to say, hey, look, I get that that's a question. And if this was a different kind of press conference, we would answer that question. But this is about the pre-draft process. And that's what we're going to keep it as. Now, they <laughs> reporters were kind of slick. They kind of found ways to ask Lamar Jackson questions without really asking. And what they did was, is a, is a, is a quarterback a possibility in round one for the Baltimore Ravens, right? And, you know, Eric DaCosta gave pretty much the standard Ravens answer when it came to that. He said that, you know, the Ravens are going to go BPA, uh, best player available at that moment. If they have a that happens to be a quarterback, then the quarterback could be selected. All right. Quarterback in round one is not out of the option for the Ravens. That's where that's straight out of Eric DaCosta's mouth. OK, he said that, that they have quarterbacks listed inside of their top 31 players in this year's draft. All right. So. That means it's obviously a selection. There's obviously a possibility that they could draft a QB. Nothing shocking there. Uh, Joe Hortiz even gave a little breakdown of all four quarterbacks as far as their strengths. You know, talking about from Will Levis, his, his cannon arm, Richardson, his physical attributes, his talent, Bryce Young, his smarts, uh, C.J. Stroud, I think we talked about his accuracy, and also his athleticism that he showcased in the Georgia game. So they've done their homework on all four quarterbacks, all right? So, um... This kind of follows up with a video I had yesterday about the Anthony Richardson coming in for an official visit. They're familiar with him, all right? So nothing's out, of, nothing's out of the question. Now, that's the Lamar Jackson segment. Let's talk about actual draft night and what I think is going to happen on draft night. Uh, Eric DeCosta talked multiple times about how he only has five draft picks. He wants to acquire more draft picks. So in my opinion, I don't, I don't expect the Ravens to pick at 22 on draft night. I think the Ravens are trading back, all right? Um, I think they're going to look to acquire multiple draft picks, whether that's second round picks, third round picks. This team loves building through the draft, and you can see that Eric DaCosta is physically pained <laughs> by the fact that the Ravens only have five draft picks. Now, if it was me and one of the top receivers, top cornerbacks, but mainly receiver, in my opinion, was there at 22, I'm not even concerned about trading back. I'm taking the guy. But the Ravens want to get more quantity in their draft picks. I mean, that's quite obvious. That's how they've always rolled. I mean, let's look. Let's talk about the last year, right? They had 11 draft picks, six in the fourth round alone. They took all six fourth round draft picks, all right? Many people, including myself, especially the Ravens, to trade some of those picks, package it up, get a higher second round pick, get a higher third round pick, something. They did not. They took all six draft picks last year in the fourth round. So that was in one round. Now they only got five picks for the entire draft. So you know that Eric DaCosta is hungry and wants more picks, all right? So... That's my opinion on that. 
Um, also, he said that Ty Munkin is a part of the process, or Joe Ortiz said that Ty Munkin is a part of the process um, as far as drafting offensive players since he's a new coordinator. Uh, he said he doesn't make the process hard, that he just wants guys that can play, right? Because he's pretty adaptable in his scheme, all right? So, okay. Um, Eric DeCosta lined out that the three three areas of, I guess, weakness going into the draft right now for the Ravens or the areas that they will look to add players, you could say, uh, is O-line, wide receiver, and cornerback. They like the cornerback class, a lot of strong, tall, physical corners. They've mentioned this in the past, so the Ravens are – Strong looking at cornerback. Don't be surprised if, you know, Deontay Banks or somebody like that is there at 22 in the Ravens draft. Joey Porter Jr., he was mentioned by name uh, by a reporter. They commented on that. Obviously, his father is Joey Porter Sr., um, you know, great Steelers linebacker who him and the Ravens had a, a you know, intense rivalry when the, when the Ravens Steelers rivalry was a little bit different, a little bit more hectic than it is now. Okay. All right. Um, so, what else did they mention about the draft? Um, oh, Edge rusher is a possibility in round one. Uh, he didn't rule it out. He said they like the current room, but you need more than four or five guys when rushing the passer in today's NFL. So this kind of brings me back to another video where I said about the Ravens being stuck in their ways a little bit, right? Now, this is a good thing, right? You want to draft edge rusher because you think he's the best player on the board? No problem. But they respect the fact that you got to rush the passer. He said also that cornerback is one of the most important positions on this team, that the Ravens defense is predicated on having a really, really good secondary. So you will you will rush the passer. You will put heavy emphasis on stopping the pass, being quarterbacks. But the wide receivers, as far as acquiring the guy, you know, is still up in the air. Okay, so, you know, um, but that should be a surprise no one. The Ravens are going to go best player available. But the best player available happens to be a wide receiver. He will get drafted. If it's a corner, if it's a, a, a old lineman, if it's a, a edge rusher, they're going to get drafted. All right. That's how the Ravens roll for better or for worse. Sometimes you should draft for need, uh, but you don't want to reach. Right. So you got to walk that fine, delicate line. All right. Um, now, as far as the wide receivers go, they talked about a couple of guys by name. Um, Jordan Addison, and Zay Flowers, he meant because somebody asked him about do y'all got do y'all view Zay Flowers as an undersized wide receiver and would you bring him here to the draft? John Harbaugh said that Zay Flowers isn't undersized. Yeah, he's 5'9, but he's a 180 pounds rock solid, you know, plays tough, strong, physical kind of guy. So they don't view those kind of guys as wide as undersized wide receivers. He said that Jordan Addison has a great stride, can make all kind of tough, contested catches. Um, so they like those guys, all right. Uh, also, they were asked about Quentin Johnston. Quentin Johnston is coming in for the Ravens for a visit tomorrow, I believe. So he's going to be in the building uh, on his top 30 visits. Uh, Ravens decided to bring him in. Uh, Joe Hortiz, the director of scouting, was asked about Quentin Johnston and mainly asked about his hands, right? Because he has a hands issue. Uh, well, not an issue, but it's one of his, could be concerned of one of his weaknesses, right? And um, pretty much he said that all receivers have drops, that he's not too worried about Quentin Johnston, that he wants to, it's more about where you're placing your hands, are you tracking the ball correctly? He said he makes incredible catches on film. So it's just certain things that probably just to tighten up to make it that it's not an issue anymore, right? Um, now for me, Quentin Johnson, um, I think he's a physically talented and gifted receiver. Uh, but the hands thing do catch me. It's not just about dropping passes. It's about the fact that he's a body catcher, right? And those guys, you let the ball get into your chest, you know, hit the shoulder pass, hit whatever, hit the chest plate, it bounces right off. You know what I'm saying? So, that can be tough when the guy's primarily a body catcher. Now, those guys in the league that make it happen. Like Terry McLaurin, if you watch Terry McLaurin, he's pretty much a body catcher, but he's one of the best receivers in the league. So there is a pathway for guys like that to be successful. I just prefer my receivers to catch the ball with their hands. That's just me. Okay. All right. Um, now, lastly, um, well, two more things, I guess. So he won't. He also wouldn't discuss Patrick Queen's fifth-year option. Somebody brought that up. The, are you guys going to pick up PQ's fifth-year option? Kind of in the same vein of Marquise Brown last year where he kind of wouldn't say much about it. Um, I think he actually did say they were going to pick it up. So maybe, maybe maybe that's not entirely true. But he said that he's going to have this conversation with Patrick Queen. He's not going to talk about that right now into the media. So um, that means what it means. We know that Patrick Queen erased all his Raven stuff off of his Instagram. I haven't checked Patrick Queen's Instagram recently. It could still be erased for all I know. I really don't know. But I'm assuming it probably still is. All right. And uh, also something I thought was interesting that, you know, a lot of people have said that Lamar Jackson is hamstringing the organization as far as free agents, right? They can't sign anybody because they're waiting on Lamar Jackson. So Eric Acosta said that they haven't had much trouble with free agency this year. 
So he said that the Ravens have never been a big free agency team. He said that they have signed people, but it's people that was already on the team, people that they wanted to bring back. And that for the Ravens, the draft will always be paramount. That's how they want to build their team, and that's through the draft. So he said the Ravens have never been a big free agency team outside of a couple years. So they haven't had really any issues as far as free agency. So that narrative about Lamar Jackson being the reason that the Ravens can't sign this or that guy, um, it's always false to me. Um, I think it was proven to be false when it was confirmed the Ravens were going after Darius Slay because Darius Slay confirmed that. So if you could go after Darius Slay, you could go after free agents. You know what I'm saying? So Lamar Jackson's contract wasn't the hindrance that has been made out to be. Um, so that's pretty much all I got from the pre-draft press conference. Um, you know, hey, look, man, it was about 40 minutes. You know, this ain't a little long, a little drawn out. But the Ravens gave it, come with some of their typical answers, gave you a little insight in there. Like, you know, they're not going to say anything about Lamar Jackson. I think the Ravens are going to trade back on draft night. They acquire more draft picks. Um, and that, listen, all possibilities are there in the first round. Quarterback, wide receiver, cornerback, um, O-line. It's all there in the first round for the Ravens to be drafted. So we'll see what happens, man. But look, if you stay to this point in the video, man, go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, you can always change your mind um, after you do. But I thank you guys for watching and uh, more Ravens content to come, man. It's Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.